What is going on guys? Dubs here, back with another RuneScape guide. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Grotesque Guardians. They require level 75 Slayer to fight, and you must be on a Slayer task. For stat requirements, I do recommend having at least 70 attack, 70 strength, 70 defense, as well as 70 range. And you will also need to have at least 43 prayer for protect from projectiles and melee. For my equipment, I'll be bringing along my Slayer helmet, since I'm on task, an amulet of torture, Bandos chestplate, Bandos tassets, primordial boots, Barrow's gloves, abyssal tentacle, fire cape, war blessing, dragon defender, and berserker ring imbued. You'll also want to make sure that you have ranged swaps. I'll be bringing along a crystal body, crystal legs, Ava's assembler, necklace of anguish, and a toxic blowpipe. For your inventory, you'll want to bring along some ranging potions, some super combats, some prayer potions, and some food. It's also important to not forget your rock hammer. You cannot defeat the bosses without your rock hammer. And I will also be bringing along my divine rune pouch for any alkables that'll drop during the bosses, as well as a tele tab back to Varrock for when I finish my task. The Grotesque Guardians are located on the top floor of the Slayer Tower. A great way to get there is using the Slayer Ring. If you don't have one of those, you can also use the Salve Graveyard, Teleport, and Run North, or you can use a Fairy Ring Code, CKS, and Run North. And if you don't have either of those, you can always use yourself a little Carol's Teleport from the Ancient Spellbook, requiring level 66, and just running again north to the Slayer Tower. Once at the Slayer Tower, go ahead and walk inside and climb up the spiky chain in the back. If you don't have high enough level agility, you'll need to go up the staircases and work your way through the Slayer Dungeon to the top floor. While walking past the Aberrant Spectres, I do recommend just turning on Protect from Magic to avoid getting hit by any of their attacks as you're working your way to the boss. Just go ahead and click the staircase and work your way up to the final floor. And here we go. This is the staircase to the boss room. Note that if you have not fought the Grotesque Guardians before, the gate will be locked. To unlock the gate, you will need to obtain a key from the gargoyles over in this room. At a drop rate of 1 in 150, the brittle key can be obtained. So that will unlock the gate and give you access to fighting the Grotesque Guardians. All right. Once inside the boss room, clicking on the giant bell will begin the boss fight. But before you do that, let's explain a couple things real quick. You have a couple tiles marked over here, the back pedal tile, the second tile, and the start tile. As soon as you ring the bell, you're going to want to run over to the start tile with your ranged gear on and protect from range, as well as eagle eye or rigor if you have it, to start damaging down dawn as quickly as possible. And the reason you're going to run over to these tiles is the meleeer, Dusk over here, is going to start walking over to you, and you're going to trap him underneath you by moving to the start tile and then to the second tile, and he'll just kind of get stuck in this corner walking around. While he's doing that, you're going to focus on damaging down Dawn over here, and once Dawn hits a certain hit point threshold, I believe it's 50%, Dawn is going to fly away. You're going to swap back to your melee gear, put on protect for melee, and start fighting Dusk. While you're fighting Dusk, within the first few melee attacks, generally two or three, he's going to activate his first special attack. He'll begin to glow orange, and you'll want to run several tiles away from him, or else you'll end up getting hit with a stun and pushed back to the edge of the room, taking a good chunk of damage. And then you just go back and start meleeing him. This fight's very straightforward. Um, after that, uh, Dawn will come back, and you'll want to start ranging down Dawn again after dodging some light beams that come down. It's a very easy fight. Sounds complicated as I'm talking about it. I'm actually just going to start it and show you guys. So we're going to drop a manta ray, equip our ranged gear, we're going to take a sip of our ranging potion, we're going to ring the bell, and we're going to run over to the start spot over here, turning on our protect from range and eagle eye, and just start hitting dawn. 
As dusk is wrought walking over, he throws his first melee attack. We're going to walk to the second tile, and we're going to trap him underneath us. He's going to sit there walking and doing his thing as we keep damaging Dawn. Once Dawn hits her 50% hit point threshold, she's going to fly away. We're going to throw back on our melee gear and start meleeing Dusk over here. So here we go. Dawn is flying away. Actually, I just sipped a potion. We're going to throw back on our ranged gear, put on protect from melee and piety, and start beating Dusk. Dusk is now going to activate his orange effect. There we go. We're going to want to run away. We'll see shadows on the ground, too. That's from boulders falling. <clears throat> Sorry. Boulders falling. You won't want to be anywhere near the boulders either. One tile away, and you will still get hit and stunned by them. So you'll want to be at least two tiles from any boulder falling on the ceiling. Here we go. Boulders falling again. No special effect this time, though. And once Dusk hits 50% health, he's going to fly away and they're going to start their second phase. Beams are going to start coming out of the ground and you'll have to be two tiles away from any beam. You want to throw back on your ranged gear and put on protect from missiles and eagle eye again and start just ranging down Dawn. During this phase though, Dawn is going to throw out energy spheres. If you do not grab these energy spheres, they will heal Dawn for 90 HP for each sphere that makes it back to her. So if you can't kill Dawn quick enough, you'll want to end up picking up the spheres to prevent her from healing. You won't need to grab the spheres if you have a high enough ranged level, good enough ranged gear, or if you bring along dragon darts in your blowpipe. I believe I'm using adamantite darts at the moment, so I did grab the orbs to prevent her from healing. You can use your special attack on your blowpipe here to heal up as well. Back up to 93 HP. And boom! Here we go, back to melee gear now. I'm going to throw on my melee gear, protect from melee, and after you kill her, this will always happen. He'll spawn flames around you. There will be one exit. You have to leave the flames before they burst. You'll get hit with a lot of damage if you don't end up leaving those. Oh, my prayer is empty. I was not paying attention. My overlay is right where my prayer is. I need to fix that. That's happened a couple times, guys. Anyways, back to protect from melee and piety and just start hitting dusk. He's just going to sit here and just start using his little energy blasts, and you're just going to sit here and soak it and just keep beating him up. Every now and then, he will still drop boulders from the ceiling. You'll want to watch out for the boulders and just move away from them if it ends up happening. But normally, he just shoots his energy blast at you as you just to keep, get to keep hitting him until he ends up going down. And smash him with your rock hammer if you don't have auto smash on. And boom! That is the fight right there. And what do we get? We got some rune legs, some granite dust, and some death runes. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's go ahead and heal up. We're going to uh, high elk these legs because we ain't got room for stuff. We're going to drop another manta over here, and we're just going to start up the next fight. Show you guys a second one in case you have any interest in it. Maybe I'll show off a couple mechanics, getting hit by them a little bit. Go ahead and start ranging again. This time I'll try and get hit by the fire and show you guys how much damage it does. I'll get hit by the stun too, show you what it looks like. Um, how long the stun is, how hard it hits for. I mean, it's not instant KO. Oh, that wasn't in the last fight. That right there, that orb she shot out that you just saw, there's another one. If you're within two tiles of that, you will get stunned. Um, it is not the most important thing to worry about. She kind of just shoots them out randomly. Sometimes they end up all the way on the other side of the map. She's not accurate with it. Uh, back to melee gear for this phase. I'm going to get hit with the stun for you guys. So here we go. He's going to go orange right here. And when he hits you with it, boom, fly to the edge, hit with a nasty chunk of damage, and you're stunned for a minute. You can still eat, but you can't really do anything else. Uh, you can get comboed if he knocks you back to boulders. You can get stunned by boulders and his stun for like a double stun duration. It's pretty brutal. Just back to meleeing him, dodging boulders as they come. Oh, I should get hit by a boulder for you guys, shouldn't I? Here we go. I'll just get hit by this boulder. Boom, 19 damage and a stun. Sitting here clicking. It's a pretty long stun, as you guys can see. Oop, oh, comboed into the orange stun from the other stun. So as you can see, getting hit by him can be deadly. You can get comboed by his attacks pretty nicely. So just try and dodge those stuns as much as possible. Those are the deadliest part of this encounter, for sure. Just keep meleeing Dusk down. And once Dusk hits his 50% threshold, he's going to fly away and begin the beam phase again. Here we go. They're going to start shooting beams, and you just want to be two tiles away from them. Super simple phase. You can throw on your ranged gear back to protect from missiles to the start tile. 
Yeah, throw on your eagle eye. Oh, prayer's out. Damn, overlay's blocking it. I am not paying attention. Go ahead and grab the orbs to stop her from healing. Oh, we'll let that orb go, actually. We'll let that one get to her to heal. We'll show you guys what the heal looks like. So the orb's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger over there until it's going to eventually, she's going to recall, it's going to fly to her, and boom, she's going to heal for 90 HP, and it's 90 health per orb that reaches her. So it is very important to make sure you either have the DPS to take the orbs out, or you're gathering them to stop her from healing. That is another essential part. That is the stun right there. If you're within a tile, two tiles of that, you'll get stunned. All right, here we go. Dawn is almost down the next phase of dusk let me heal up for this because this fire actually hits really nasty and i'm going to get hit by it just to showcase it to you guys and it is deadly so here we go full health 99 hp standing in the fire 49 health hit right there it does not feel good at all highly recommend dodging it super easy to dodge guys back to beating up dusk right here super easy fight just finishing it up. Just protect for melee, basically AFKing the last few minutes of it. He doesn't really use the boulders here. I think I've seen him use it once or twice. And uh, it's just not very frequent, so you don't have to worry about him, really. I don't even think I've ever seen him go orange here and do the stun again during this phase. I don't even know if he can. And just keep beating him up. Eventually, he's going to go down if my RNG goes through thought i had piety on i'm out of prayer again i'm a silly boy silly boy this damn overlay is killing me back to melee back to piety there we go oh there's the stun oh it's not the stun it's just the fire again so he will do the fire twice you're just gonna run out of it and back to beating him up there we go only four hp left and we hit him with the hayrock hammer to smash him what do we get this time? Some gold bars, some coal, and some granite dust. Nothing too crazy. But these guys do have some of the coolest, or the coolest pet in the game, if I do say so myself. I love it. I think that the little guardian is sweet. Um, Yeah, they have a good drop table, too. You know, you won't be making millions or billions here, but they have some good drops, some granite hammers. You can also end up getting granite dust, which you can equip with your granite balls. To, no. I don't know what I'm saying. You can use a granite dust on your cannonballs, turning them to granite cannonballs, increasing the damage they do, making them even more useful. And the cannon is super deadly already, as we all know. So that's always nice, having a little bit more DPS from that. As you can see from 67 dusk kills, I have came out with 3.73 million gold. So nothing too crazy, nothing really to brag about. Great easy boss, though. Kind of teaches you a little prayer swap in little movement mechanics it's a nice entry level slayer boss it definitely belongs at level 75 good intro to bossing but uh yeah guys that is it for this guide right here the grotesque guardians thank you all for hanging out if you've made it this far let me know if there's another runescape boss you would like to see a guide for i enjoy making them and i have a blast checking out new content i haven't done yet so let me know if there's a boss you guys would like to see or if there's any way i can improve my current guides and thank you all again, and I'll see you next time. Game on, my friends.